Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, Episode 3, Education of a Magician. I definitely enjoyed this episode, but it kind of, the ending was, you know, pretty upsetting. I mean, it's, I know it's basically a miniseries, so they do, you know, it's one of the things that we always get in miniseries where something big's going to happen. Unfortunately, when it's like this, it means it happens so soon, we don't really get to appreciate characters that we enjoy. So, sadly, we did lose, I guess, the other John or, um, Children Mass, or, because I feel like they never, I feel like they honestly never said his name. I feel like I never once heard Children Mass. I honestly had to look his name up, because I really did not know what his name was. And, you know, it really sucks that, you know, we lost him as a character. He, he was never really touted as, like, a full-fledged magician, but he obviously was. He knew magic, he had spells, it wasn't just you know, like the tarot cards before, but he did a full-on spell, which I thought was actually really cool, because it was like, okay, he's obviously privy to magic, he knows certain things, but this was like, he had like a full-on, you know, vision of magic, like he could sense that magic was happening, and he did like an actual locator spell, which is full-fledged magic, it's classic magic even, like just a simple spell to locate you know, a form of magic, locate someone, that's, like, the most basic thing in all of magic, and so it was, like, you know, it kind of sucks that he was never fully touted as an, um, a full-on magician, which I think does make sense because of the whole history, or, um, the legend that's supposed to happen between these two great magicians, so I, I guess it does make sense that he wasn't fully touted, even though it would have been really cool to have him recognized as a third magician, but unfortunately he does get shot i have to assume he's not going to survive this because he was shot point blank it's obviously during the time period that it is unless he's like incredibly fortunate and even with magic there just might not be anything that can help save him possibly you know there might be something that does we did of course you know the other side of things with the death we got you know at the end we got the reanimation towards the center of the episode with Jonathan during the war he reanimates three separate corpses and he can't seem to reverse that but they're kind of stuck in you know kind of in zombie mode they're stuck in between where they aren't exactly functioning human beings they're sort of trapped and they're like speaking this you know they're speaking their normal language but um when they first rose it was like they were speaking seemingly a dialect of hell so um, I just thought it was really cool. It was like a nice contrast where we have this, the dead brought to life, and then of course someone who's living being killed by the end of this episode. And in the middle, we have a character who is of course Lady Pole, who is trapped in the middle. She's, um, been dead and brought back to life, but in a, a much better way than, and I guess that was another thing, is that we get to really see Jonathan use his form of reanimation and how that worked, you know, not ex not nearly as well as compared to what Mr. Norrell did, but at the same time, it's not exactly working out too well for Lady Pole. Like, even that isn't really something that she's wanted, and obviously she's trapped in this crazy, weird limbo that she's hating, and it's like she's, you know, obviously going insane with the gentleman kind of coming after her, and she's having these moments, you know, she's obviously over the dancing, and so she's trying to tell people what happened, and she does it through the tapestry, and I thought it was pretty cool that that was her plan, like, she finally, she figured out a plan, like, this is how I can tell people, because whatever is happening to her, you know, the spell is, you know, the gentleman himself, he's basically stopping her from telling people exactly what she wants to say, like, this guy is basically, he is, like, he has control over me, so... She's able to do it, you know, through the tapestry, which is, of course, stolen. Um, and Norrell, you know, in this episode, he was kind of going, you know, getting to this point where he kind of seems like the bad guy in the series because he's taking all these letters because he doesn't want to be caught for what he did. It's like, you know, he knows that he made this deal and he was tricked. And, of course, he doesn't want to tell people, like, oh, I was tricked by this thing. And that's why she's going insane. He just wants it to be like, well, she's kind of lost it. Like, I brought her back to life. And, hey, you know, this, she just went insane. And that's all there is to it. So, you know, he's intercepting letters uh, between Jonathan and his wife. And it's like, he doesn't want any of that stuff to, to go down. It's like, well, I have to see what she's telling him. Because I don't want it to really spread to everybody that all this stuff happened, so I, I just really love that it seemed like he was going further and further down this path, where it's like, 
he's kind of going down the path of being a bit of a villain a little bit. It was like a much, you know, it's a very minor thing compared to the other stuff he could have done, I guess. But still, he's intercepting these messages and he's stealing this stuff. And it's like, I have to make sure basically I save myself because I screwed up and I don't want to admit that because I want magic to be respected and I want people to appreciate magic for what it is and I don't want to tarnish it because of, you know, a spell that worked but I got tricked kind of in between, you know, casting and completing the spell. So I like the way that that played out and with things kind of going the way that they did with this grand spell that the entire episode we really get to see him talk about like I don't want to get caught for this and now it's led to him losing really the closest person to him because it's like that was it like the other two guys that are always there and trying to talk and you know they're kind of in between playing around and trying to learn stuff and help Miss Norrell but in the last episode they kind of messed with him uh, just to see what he would do with like the book sale and all that stuff so he doesn't really have them they're kind of just there to really seems like just to have fun and kind of get whatever information they can just to play around a little bit so he's really lost the only person he has close to him and of course with Jonathan um you know unbeknownst to Mr. Norrell Jonathan being his enemy he's gonna lose him as well because he's gonna push him and they may or may not even find out because they did um sort of make a point of the fact that he kind of kept all these notes just in one drawer like he just has this drawer his his desk is not like a secret drawer or anywhere else it's like the desk he's always sitting at the main drawer right in front of that chair there's just a bunch of letters so you know that could easily be found out in the next episode or two and that's what really leads them because he's going to get confronted and it's like well now i have to say something i have to say something and get out of this or at least attempt to i don't think he will but you know, he's lost the closest person to him, and that's really going to change his character, I, I would have to assume, and obviously it's going to bring more attention to him, which he doesn't really need, because he's trying to keep it secret that he got tricked, and of course, Lady Pole knows this, and he, you know, he's, obviously they're going to side with her over him, because just his personality, I think, um, more than anything else, like even people that don't really know her would most likely side with her over him. Uh, due to his personality but I can't wait to see where they take things and like where it picks up because I'd love to see if it picks up or, you know the next episode picks up at the beginning or at the end of this episode and they're still on the street and they deal with the aftermath right there or if it maybe skips time and she's like in prison or something and her husband has to go um, see her and he has to figure things out because you know of course he has a lot of power but I don't think he can exactly just be like take her out of jail they would still have to kind of go through the system. Or maybe not, because, you know, that's just how things work. Even today, that's, those things work that way. If you have a certain ranking, you can kind of get things, you know, um, expedited. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. But I'm really excited to see how this uh, confrontation leads to, you know, the other characters' interactions with Norrell and how he decides to at least try to get out of things because they're obviously going to be exposed she's going to have to say why did you try to kill him and she's going to she's going to be like because of this and he is going to have to find some way to talk himself out of it i don't think he possibly could and that's why i feel like the only path really is that it's going to lead to everyone going against him a hundred percent so that's kind of what i'm excited for because i mean we know it's going to happen where they are jonathan and um Norell are enemies so I think this is going to be like the main catalyst because he's not going to be able to just you know lie or anything she's gonna she did this giant event and it's gonna have to be talked about and she's gonna have to give her explanation so I'm incredibly excited uh, for that and then um like I said the other stuff with Jonathan was actually really great too like obviously it's just the ending we actually lost a character so that's why I'm spending so much time on that but everything that happened uh, with Jonathan was amazing as well. Like, I love the spell that he did in the beginning when he uh, actually ends up making a road even though he thought he failed. And, you know, he drops the rock. I thought, visually, I thought that looked kind of cool too and the rocks just kind of multiply almost and they just form this, you know, long road. Um, he hates the war. Like, the captain just keeps calling him uh, Merlin and stuff. And I kind of like the fact that they threw that in. I didn't think... I don't know why I thought that, but I was thinking, like, Merlin would be 
like just not really talked about you know in this kind of universe but it's still like the same universe it's just you know it's actual magic now so i thought that was actually kind of cool um obviously him bringing back the three soldiers was really great and just the way that affected him as a character where it's like he finally did this thing and of course that's after he lost um you know the person i guess the second closest person you know that he knew the person was the second closest to him i'm not sure how to phrase that but you know he lost a, he lost a good friend and he of course lost all those books too and the one that survives is the tell the raven king which is the first book that he got from his wife and i love the way that they did that and so after he fails with the spell of trying to get rid of the forest and you know they talk about how it's a different form of magic because it's nature magic versus inanimate objects that are just you know pieces of paper like in the last episode when he um made the copy of the piece of paper he basically reversed it where the image or the mirror copy was in our world but the actual image was inside the mirror so it's like an inanimate object is nothing compared to trees which you know exist so i thought that was cool they kind of touched on that like different things have different forms of magic and he mentions that a couple of different times so you know, after that fails and they get attacked and he loses a friend he has to kind of do everything he can and so he, when he brings these three people back that in itself was really cool and of course they got him a ton of respect when he uh, finally le finally left out of the windmill which they mentioned it was actually a couple of days afterwards so you know he was in there for days with these basically three zombies and it's like I don't know how to get rid of them I can't reverse this spell he doesn't know how to do it and maybe that just oops <laughs> maybe that just kind of speaks to who the Raven King really was and that he has these powerful spells which I'm sure could be reversed he obviously just does spells and he doesn't know how to reverse them so you know he used what little knowledge he had of course out of the one book that I'm sure he's basically utilized a hundred percent of by now um so he can't reverse this spell even shooting them um was kind of like full-on zombie mode he took the guy's gun and he shot the uh one guy in the chest and he just kind of looked down and it was like it basically seemed like you know why'd you shoot me he said something but it was just like ah um so i thought it was just a good moment it's like he did this huge spell it really affected him as a character and you know it gained him a lot of respect so it was like he had this moment where he did a great spell but it hurt him but then he you know got the sort of applause of the crowd afterwards and it was sort of like you know a double-edged sword where it's like i did this spell and i want to give them their peace because of course he found out what they were talking about like they wanted to go home because it seemed like they were getting becoming more and more human because it seemed like they weren't speaking um sort of the hellish dialect like they were when they first rose up not nearly as much at least so i just like the way that they played that where it really affected him all the spells that he did even just a natural human idea of just shooting them nothing worked and so he was kind of torn down from that like i don't want these three you know human beings brought back to life and just trapped like this forever but then after that it's like he gets the respect from all these people who kind of treated him like crap admittedly and you know that you know once again comes after he lost a good friend so he kind of had like two it was like a crappy moment and then a good moment which became crappy because he couldn't reverse the spell or figure it out and then he had like another good moment and of course going back to his wife was probably the best moment but i just like the way that they did that where he got a bit of respect that he rightfully deserved and earned but he still had some really tough moments he experienced war for sure so i love the way that they played that and they you know, it was, you know, it was very well done. It was fast, and just in this one episode, he went through a couple of days, lost a friend, uh, did the reanimation, couldn't figure that out, then got the, like, a, the great admiration from the entire encampment. So it was just really cool. I liked the way that they sort of played with his character in this episode, the highs and lows of his skills, or lack thereof, and then just the natural consequence of him going out to help the war, using magic so i definitely love that um all the stuff with lady pole was really good and her trying to actually figuring out a way to tell people her story with the tapestry i thought that was actually really cool and then we also have i think the last little bit was with steven and the gentleman and the gentleman's kind of been working with him and the gentleman has been you know fixated with mrs strange and so he's 
you know, he feel like, I thought it was really weird, like, the way that he spoke, it seemed like he dealt in, like, really weird absolutes, it was like, you know, Jonathan left for war, and one of the things he mentioned was like, oh, well, he abandoned her, and it was like, well, he went to war to help his country, and I thought it was weird that he said that, and then she mentions, like, oh, we can't see each other, and I thought it was kind of interesting how he, I don't know how that really worked out, it was like, obviously, he just, poof, he, like, teleported in and stuff like that. And then it seemed like she would kind of forget about it because she saw the image of him like in the tapestry and she mentioned that it was kind of like uncanny or she didn't say uncanny, but it was something similar to that. But it's like she almost forgets that he exists because he kind of just warps in and starts talking to her. And then when that happened, when she was like, well, we can't see each other unless my husband, husband is present. He felt as if he was kind of betrayed by her or something. So it was like he deals, he kind of saw things in the way that he wanted to see them so I thought that was pretty interesting and then he talks about how Stephen was um is basically a slave like even though he's been educated and christened and stuff like that he shows him where he was born and he asks him the like really tough questions like what was the name your mother gave you and I thought that was a great scene that was like a really dramatic little scene that I wasn't expecting at all and so it's like you know he's not a slave but at the same time he kind of is and it's it was just an interesting way to reveal that to him. Like, this is where you were truly born. And this boat is actually owned by the family that you still help out. You think you you feel like you're just helping them because he raised you this way and stuff like that and treated you nice. But ultimately, that's just who you, this is what you truly are. And so he kind of wants to have these magicians killed because, you know, they're difficult to kill. But if there's someone who's a king... He has all the resources in the world to send, you know, against this, these two magicians. So, I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't know if it would be instantaneous or if it would be a natural process or something. Which, if it's, you know, with it being a miniseries, I feel like it would kind of have to be, um, obviously much faster and stuff like that. But I enjoyed this episode. I've been talking, well, not nearly as long as I thought I was. I thought it had already hit, like, 23 minutes. Um, but there was just, there was just so much in this episode. I really, really loved it. Um, sad ending. It, it does suck that we lost a character, which he, you know, I really did love his character because it was like he, you know, John was really involved in magic. He obviously had, you know, sort of a feeling for it. And we got to see him do a, you know, full on spell at the end of this episode. And sadly, you know, after we see him do, like, this actual spell, like, there's a light forming inside the glass and stuff, and it's leading him to where the magic is. After we see him actually do this spell and stuff, and he does, you know, like, the whispering into the glass and stuff, just like Jonathan did in the forest when he was uh, whispering into the book, and doing, like, the uh, the mist spell, which was actually really cool, too. Um, yeah, after we actually see him do a full-on... I don't want to say magic trick, because it's weird to say magic trick. Do a spell, that, that's better. Um, after we see him do a full-on spell, he gets killed off, so it's like, that really does suck. But, who knows, we might see Jonathan bring him back, and it could be different, because he, you know, if they do it in the same day, and he brings him back, and it's not the same as the guy who had, like, you know, a maggot coming out of his head, and they have you know, decomposition like crazy. So, we still might see him come back as sort of, a different form of him. He might not be able to do magic anymore if he's um, been reanimated. But we might also see Narelle try to do the spell as well, but he might not because he saw what happened to Lady Pole and he wouldn't want to do that to someone, especially someone he actually cares about, like the one person he really does give a crap about. So I don't know how they're going to play this next episode, um, but there are definitely a lot of possibilities, so I'm really excited for it. We have a possible king with, you know some he's almost like a spy basically the gentleman is like just he has his own agenda to kill off the magicians so he's trying to make someone else a leader so that he can really get what he wants and then there's obviously just everything else that's going on including a full-on war which obviously isn't the main point of the series but there is a war happening which we really got the focus on um in this episode so definitely i think this has to be my favorite episode so far just so much stuff happened just all packed into one nice episode. So I'm really excited for episode four. Of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And of everything we saw in this episode, particularly um, 
Jonathan doing the reanimation spell as well as the other John unfortunately being killed off, what would you say was um, the biggest moment of this episode that's going to uh, you know, impact the rest of the series? Because with Jonathan doing this big spell and of course him just experiencing war in general, that's going to change him at least somewhat. It has to. And then of course us losing um, the other John, it's going to affect Mr. Norrell and you know, like I said, with Lady Pole being the one that did that, why the heck did she do it, and all the things that that's going to lead into, so I want to know what you guys think. I, I feel like the most impactful thing would have to be the death of a character. It, it typically is, no matter what the series is, unless it's just like, yeah, everybody dies all the time, but, you know, I think both definitely have some great impacts, but like I said, I want to know which moments of this episode do you guys think is going to have the biggest impact on the rest of the series? So please comment below, let me know, and of course, thanks for watching.